Welcome, guys. It's the next episode of Future Farms and Food, and I'm here today in the Bronx at Green Food Solutions with uh, Mary and Electra, and I uh, want to welcome them today on the show. Uh, welcome, Thank guys. You. Thank you for Thank being you. on. Yeah. So uh, I just want to get it all started, just kind of talk about the background of Green Food Solutions and uh, how everything started, and uh, if you want to give a little intro to that, that'd be great. Uh, Absolutely, Mary? yeah. yeah. Um, so Green Food Solutions is our company. Uh, Green Food Solutions is our company. We started it about a year and a half ago. Uh, we sell, install, and maintain vertical hydroponic farms and gardens, like the tower garden you see here. We also represent a shipping container called Freight Farms. Um, and we sell them to schools, restaurants, chefs. Uh, we empower a new local food system by having them in residential buildings where residents can have freshly farmed food delivered to their door. Uh, we do a farm to locavore program, which is basically a food weekly delivery program where Electra, she's the farming director, she harvests the food and delivers it uh, to offices all throughout New York and uh, Jersey City, uh, Brooklyn, Queens. So um, that's, you know, and uh, we really do all this inside of our commitment to uh, empowering a local food system. and awesome. And how that addresses, in turn, uh, food justice in a real way. You guys have been in the industry for a bit now, um, and you've seen pretty much all the different systems out there. Like, What made you guys choose to go with the tower farms to kind of... Um, so what had, had us choose this is I actually uh, got my master's in, in sustainable environmental systems at mm -hmm. Pratt, which is within the city planning department, mm -hmm. and... Um, I was really trying to figure out uh, how could vertical farms be a means for food justice. So I was actually interning um, at Agritecture at the mm. time and um, I basically just dealt, like, dived into a bunch of different systems, tried to figure out how each of them operated. Before that, I was working at Boswick Farms. I got to experiment with a bunch of systems over there. So before, you know, leading up to starting the company, we, I had actually had about two to three years of experience with hydroponics. Um, and uh, I found the tower garden to actually be the most affordable and the most accessible from a learning curve um, uh, standpoint. So a lot of systems, uh, they come with a lot of moving parts. The tower garden is this one, all-in-one system. It comes with the reservoir, the pump, and everything, and you just put it together right out of the box. Um, when it comes to the freight farm, we chose that because it, we had a lot of experience in it, and it I would say it's probably the uh, the top shelf, if you if you would, of like container farming. And we really want to see small farms, not like large scale commercial farms. Even even though those have their place, and you know we still sell tower gardens to lar large um, commercial farms. Um, we want to see small farms all over the place. We have a couple tower gardens behind us, as you can see. Um, so for people that don't know about the tower garden yeah. uh, or how it works, could you just briefly go over the system? And sure. Explain? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the tower garden is actually an aeroponic system. Um, there is a water pump inside of here. So this is actually a water reservoir. I don't know if people can see it. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a water pump in the middle that actually shoots water through the center of the system. Um, and then there are shower caps at the top of each of these tiers um, that distribute the water with nutrient-rich um, solution onto the plant roots. Um, and this gets recycled. 100% of the water is recycled, and it actually saves uh, 90 to 98% of uh, the water that's traditionally used in agriculture. Um, and you can have this on an automated system. So it actually comes with the, um, the timer to, uh, to make sure that you don't have to water it. Mm -hmm. um, and you have something to say? I just say, yeah. honestly, yeah, for myself, I have one in my apartment. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I don't know, I, have one, I don't have a green thumb. I kill succulents, <laughs> like things that need no attention whatsoever. Yeah. And that's one of the things that it is really accessible to people who want to grow their own food, want that transparency. And it, you know, isn't something that uh, is, there's a barrier of knowledge between right. you and growing your own food. Okay, so for this specific setup right here, the seven pot tower, like what would this go for? Uh, um, so for seven, well, starting from the, the lowest price, oh, okay. it's $525 for the five tiers. And that comes with everything you need to grow. So uh, it comes with the tower, the net pots, 
um, some seeds, rock wool, and a humidity dome in order to start your seedlings, right. mm -hmm. as well as the water pump. And um, am I missing anything? Uh, I mean, no, pretty much everything. You said the seeds, yeah. everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so everything that's five hundred and twenty-five dollars, and you can actually finance it over the course of a year. So you're paying about forty-five twenty-five a month uh, for a year. Um, the extension, the extension kits are about sixty bucks. Okay. So for every additional tier, it's an additional sixty dollars. And they come two tiers at a time, so not each additional. Uh, okay. will come yeah. the extensions right. too. So the original for five twenty-five, you have the five tiers. If for an extra sixty dollars, you can go up seven tiers. Right. right. And in terms of variety of, I see. You know, we have. Strawberries here. We got uh, some thyme. Uh, what like? What else can you grow? Yeah, so you can grow anything leafy greens. So lettuce, kale, bok choy, um, cabbage. But then you can also grow your more hardier brassicas like um, cabbage and broccoli. Um, even cooler is that you can grow vining crops. So we and just add a, yeah, we have oh, a tomato over here. Tomato um, we haven't set up the cage yet, but eventually we'll have a trellis for the, those tomatoes and you can awesome. grow strawberries. Um, what's really cool is that these strawberries actually sent out these shooters, mm -hmm. right? And so usually in soil, when it sends out that shooter, it goes directly into the ground and starts a new strawberry mm. plant. We took that straw, that shooter and we just plugged it into a new hole. hole. Um, so that's awesome. the, the cool thing about having the tower is it kind of has that versatility. Um, you can grow eggplant, you can grow squash, you can grow All watermelon. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can grow... Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I <me do>. too. <laughs> um, All the, uh, pretty much any herb you can think of. The, I guess the you could even grow carrots if you wanted to, but mm -hmm. it may not make sense. Yeah, and, and this system was particularly designed, um, it was actually designed by uh, Tim Blanks, who is a, he, he was the head horticulturalist at Disney Epcot. Mm -hmm. And so he had experience with like pretty much every hydroponic system under the sun. They were growing banana trees with hydroponics, um, all sorts of things. And what I thought was really brilliant in a conversation I had with him about the design is that this is the one hydroponic system that allows the roots to really grow and mm -hmm. continue to grow. And people right. have had kale plants that are two years old inside of these systems right, right. Um, because the roots have so much space. And that's one of the biggest problems in hydroponics is um, a lack of root space mm -hmm. for it to grow. And the ground, you know, unlimited space, but in, a, uh, in many of these hydroponic systems, you don't have that. Um, and that actually addresses yields. You know, if you are growing commercially, that's something you obviously want to think of. Even if you're growing for yourself, but this is something you want to think of for uh, a restaurant or more of a commercial operation. Right. One of the number one reasons that hydroponics or farms lose a crop or have a loss of yield in a way are water-based diseases. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't lose your whole crop because all of these reservoirs are individual in that mm -hmm. way. You could feed them through the systems that get set up in the same automated way. But now you don't have to lose your entire crop over it based right. on new systems being available. People that are out there that are thinking about starting a vertical farm on their own, you know, they might you know, end up coming to you guys, buying these tower farms, or they, they can source the products, but maybe they don't know how to start the enterprise or the business themselves. Do you have any advice in terms of the challenges that you guys face? It could be with technology itself or figuring that out or, you know, setting up uh, a company in any of those aspects um, that would be helpful for people. No, that's great, Albert. I'm, I am glad that you asked the question because I think that is a challenge for a lot of people starting up. And one of the things that we've done personally, I think, is addressing um, the finances. Where do you get your money from? Mm -hmm. um, we actually were operate on something that I created and I heard about. I mean, I named it something uh, called customer financing. Um, and essentially, you know, you kind of can get the concept. It's you get your customers to finance and create your cash flow. Um, there's a system obviously behind that that I can go into, but we like to help people get started and show them how to do this uh, mm -hmm. with systems like this because they're more accessible. Um, people can start up a business with something like this because you could buy 12 of these for only $500 a month. That's a lot less capital to raise, you know, the total cost being $6,000 but for $500 a month. And then again, over the course of 12 years, then you own it. It's not like ongoing payments of something. So I think the accessibility of funding um, and not having to go to a lot of joint venture capitalists, another way that we uh, are successful, I think that um, could be addressing this challenge is that uh, of finances and where do we get them from, 
So, you know, while we do customer financing is also when you get investors, you have to share equity usually in your business. So we've been able to not have to do equity, but yet have the, the customer financing to keep cash flow right. strong. So, right, right. yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the, the challenges like we've faced is uh, just personally as a company is um, people thinking of us as a farm, as a, we sell food, but really we sell farms. Um, we sell the, you know, the tower garden, we sell freight farms, um, and even, and selling food is just kind of like what we, what happens when you sell farms, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, because we, we also are, um, learning and, uh, like always learning different ways to grow with these towers. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're always experimenting with them and, and having experience as, as operating just as a farm, um, I would say one of the biggest challenges is not growing the food, it's actually selling the food. And that's the hardest part yeah. is um, really finding that customer base and finding a loyal customer base. Um, people want this. It's just sometimes, it, you know, if you're not going through the industrial food system, like through a, um, a supermarket or even a farmer's market, which have become kind of corporatized now, um, it's, it's hard to get people to want to subscribe to some sort of CSA or something mm -hmm. like that. And that, that was pretty challenging, like reaching yeah. out to those customers, even though people want this, um, just finding the distribution method as well. It's, right. it, I think that's definitely a challenge. So I encourage people who are interested in starting a farm to, um, really, uh, do some research and look into who their customers really are. Oh, definitely. Uh, Get out there, you know, if you're looking to start an endeavor like this and uh, like Mary said, just do a grassroots, you know, don't waste $5,000 on Facebook ads, try to, you know, sell your produce because that probably won't work. Uh, so, you, you know, people got to see a face of the company. They got to know who they're buying the product from, uh, you know, the, their, the face behind the brand. So that's, that's definitely it's the important. Relationship, yeah, the relationship, the story. Yeah, yeah exactly. people really like, um, you know, they, they like that I have a background in health and mm -hmm. that she has a background in uh, environmental sustainable systems, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, sustainability is really important to both of us, but that's really her expertise. And mm -hmm. so whenever you're starting any type of business, you know, know your story, know your customer, who you're speaking to. And again, you know, we'd be happy to have a conversation with anyone who's interested in doing that. Another thing I want to ask you is where you guys think uh, green food solutions will be in five years or where you would like it? What's your vision for the company down the road? The vision for the company down the road is literally to flood cities with farms. So if I'm looking at five years, um, I'd like to see at least 10 residential buildings with farms that are serving food to the residents in that building. Uh, it could be companies like Google. It could be companies like WeWork, uh, buildings like We Live, and engaging uh, just residential buildings like you and I live in that, you know, our residents uh, as an amenity as opposed to, you know, everyone has a pool or a yeah. gym or even some beautiful park area on top of your roof. But the real vision is to see, I mean, at least 10. I mean, if I'm trying to keep it conservative, but I want to flood cities with farms uh, yeah. where, you know, that again, when you have a rooftop farm uh, on a company, you're having that company serve delicious, healthy food to its employees or you're having it to the residents. So I really see this. And then as a byproduct, maybe food pantries and nearby homeless shelters can get the, the surplus. Whenever there's farms, there's always surplus. Mm -hmm. Here we have a surplus all the time. So that's something that now can get delivered to people and get in the hands of accessibility, really addressing food justice. I see the industry in five years really taking um, a hold of urban farming in a huge way. Um, and specifically in these small farms. And that's, you know, you know, on top of buildings, in parks, in schools. Um, and I also see the in industry moving in the way of commercial farming and having these large, like, uh, commercial farms on the outskirts of the city where uh, that food will hopefully be uh, edible inside the city. Um, but we really want to see more people growing their own food. So I think the industry is going to be moving in the direction of individuals like you and I growing at home, or we also know, uh, if we don't grow our own, we, we know our local urban farmer. If 
our viewers out there uh, want to reach out to you guys um, or take a look at the Tower Gardens on your website, uh, you know, what are the social media handles and emails or any other contact they could reach out to you? Um, so our website is greenfoodsolutions.com. Um, we also have an Instagram at Green Food Solutions, Facebook, facebook.com slash Green Food Solutions. We made it real easy. And you can reach us uh, at Electra at greenfoodsolutions.com. That's my email. Um, and any inquiries you have, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we want to help you set up farms. We want to help you grow food. Um, and we really want to create that new local food system. And if that's something you're interested in, please, please do contact us. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. I want to thank Mary and Electra for being with us today uh, on the show. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, you know, it turned out to be a wonderful day. It was rainy, almost raining and cloudy when we got here. Sun came out. Super hot in here, but oh, yeah. it's, it's the all best good. You got a tan out here. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, awesome. Thank <laughs> you.